Alright, so that's, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can you can chuck in a backup like this, and you'll see uh, every time it does that sequence of uh, red light, blue light, it just means that the, the mod chip's resetting the drive. Um, it'll disable itself when you put an original game in. Um, basically, once it starts reading, it'll, it'll start flashing. Once it makes this sound, that little tiny sound there with the laser moves, that means the game's red and uh, already on the screen, and I'll kind of prove it by just Checking this in. Should show up in a second. No, oops. Put the wrong one in. Actually, you won't be able to see the screen. <laughs> Alrighty. Now, you can't just close the Wii as it is because there's a, a metal uh, metal plate here and you can't make the mod chip touch that so um, what this whole Wii Clip thing is is you can basically uh, take this tiny little bit off and it pops over here really nicely um, you don't have to, I mean I don't like using this personally because it kind of blankets the whole mod chip and it, it kind of restricts airflow in the Wii um, this little tiny hole here is actually where the when the DVD drive spins, uh, the air gets it's forced through this little hole and kind of cools down the plate so the Wii doesn't uh, overheat. So I mean this is fine uh, as long as you're not uh, restricting that little hole there. Um, but what I like to do is 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 just put some uh, some tape over here and here. Um, but yeah, we'll just use this for now. But uh, I mean no, the only mod chip that has this little uh, cable is the D2 Pro. Uh, so I'll show you how to route this this cable anyway. It's basically for updating this chip here. The D2 Pro and, and the D2 all work uh, by these two chips kind of working together. This little chip is a chip that is DVD upgradable. Um, you, can, you can upgrade 100% of that by sticking a DVD and uh, it kind of streams data to, uh, to this bit here. Um, and that controls all the game authentication. So that is really the only thing that the end user will ever need. Uh, to update, but this chip here is uh, is the Actel, and that that's kind of in charge of the initial hacking of the console and, and how it kind of controls the DVD drive. It, it it'll never really need to be updated uh, from the you know when it's installed and working. I mean that's it. Nintendo can't change the firmware of these chips via D, uh, via like a, a Nintendo update, but it's kind of like a, a just in case uh, just in case something really bad happens um, cable. So. Uh, I mean, you can you can always install it at a later date, um, but it's kind of better just to, to do it right the first time. Um, so you kind of pass the uh, the cable into that little JTAG connector, and then you close you close it down. What I just show you is just looks uh, looks like that. Now grab some. Uh, Grab some tape, put it on here, cover the mud chip up. Now you just kind of touch the cable like that. Now to put it back, you need to pass this little tiny um, cable back inside that little that little nook there, um, and then you should be able to close the way properly. Now you've got the cable uh, hanging loose here. The, the, probably the best way to, to route this cable is through the USB port. Uh, that's where I like doing it. So take this down like this and fold it over 90 degrees like that. Fold it over 90 degrees as well and, and here's the USB port here. It's just long enough. It's a perfect, uh, perfect length. Alright, so putting the weed back together you got the four these screws here. I just like uh, putting them into place first. Oh good, come on. And then screwing them in.
Now you might want to just test out your Wii again um, right after you put on the case just because it will probably take you for the first time a good uh, 10 minutes to open and close the Wii so um, this is the Wii case just put it back on slide in like that do this part first where it kind of meets up and then you just uh, either press it in if it doesn't go in there's just these little metal things you just kind of push in and it slides in like that uh, next thing you want to do is, is put this back on it just slides in like that there you go, there's your Wii, ready to be closed. Alright, so two tri wings back in here. Oh. Next, you can put your, uh, your battery back in. And that little black screw in the corner there. the rubber side back on. Alright, and you got the two black tri wings. In the corner here, and then two more two normal silver tri wing screws. Just drop it down the hole there. The right way of course. Alright, so you just put these two Rubber stickers, rubber stoppers back. Two protective uh, ways to hide the screws. Back on the top there. Alright, lastly, we've got the two tri wings. Now, to put this back in, you kind of uh, slide it in like that, a tiny bit, and you've got these one, two, three, four, five little uh, spots here, so it kind of clicks into place nicely. So once that's nice and flat, um, there's, there'll be three black screws left, uh, putting the longest one first, the longest one goes on the uh, on the corner here next to the closest one to the face of the Wii. Then you put second last one, and then the last one. I've got one little sticker left. Oh, I forgot to put it on here. Alright, so then you just put on this little bit here. And then this last one here. That's pretty much all done. You've just got the, uh, the USB cable. The, the JTAG cable, sorry, hanging out the back there. Um, it's best to kind of tape it down. Uh, if you have kids, they're going to pull that. And because it, it's hooked right to the mod chip, if you pull that, it's going to mess with the mod chip. So um, you just get some, some white tape and put it over nicely like that. And there you go, you can hardly even see it. So that's the Wii uh, modified and ready to go. Um, thank you.